Week 5, I was paired against Behe, who is overall the solid player with less than zero experience in ADV, mostly known for DPP. The last three weeks had brought spikes, uh, bulkier spikes teams, balance or fat, however you want to individual, individually categorize each. Week one with me bringing a spikeless offense, so to mix it up I decided spikes offense would be a pretty cool bring. I don't like the traditional six of Smeargle, Tyranitar, Aerodactyl, Gengar, Swampert, and Superachi. I don't like how it removes the game from your hands mostly. When your opponent knows your team and your team isn't the best defensively, it opens room for a lot of prediction mind games, which shouldn't need to exist. You should be able to structure your team in a way that's unique, which eliminates needless prediction. It's not like the team is something immaculate amazing, unreproducible in efficiency. That team has a lot of bad matchups. It has good matchups as well. But overall, I did not want to bring that six specifically. This switches it up, keeping my opponent on their toes, while also being better defensively. It still has the same concept of getting up spikes and attacking them with physical hitters. With this team in particular adding Metagross, while the other team has more of a mixed approach with Gengar and Superachi. Spinning is difficult for the opposition, and they're also going to be fearing Gengar, so they very well may not even click Rapid Spin when they're giving the opportunity to do so. With Dragnets and Baton Pass, Mirgo is able to confront uh, Rapid Spinners that switch directly into it getting a drag dance off on the switch and then sporing and spiking or whatnot, spiking, and then as they spin, you can DD and you can pass out into Zapdos or directly to Aerodactyl, Metagross, Tyranitar, even Suicune, depending on what is optimal in the game state. Overall, I like the team. Has a lot of good strengths on the Tyranitar set at Plus one, it reaches 274 for Smeargle, I believe. Well, 183. I'm not going to do the math. You can if you want to see what it hits at 1.5 times speed. At times two speed, it hits 366, which is slower than Dunk Trio even. However, the appeal of this set is that it has bulk and a lot of attack allowing it to do more damage. Your speed very likely will not matter, as if you're going to get plus two, or if they're going to send it in thinking they KO you at plus one, there's no real difference. If you're plus two, they're not going to send a Dunk Trio or Aerodactyl, unless they are extremely desperate. And if you're at plus one, you're not outspeeding Dunk Trio anyways. So overall, this is really solid. And it has a lot of strengths, and with Salic Berry, that can boost you even more. It can, at plus three, you will outspeed Aerodactyl. And it can get, give you the other boost to make your opponent not send in that Tongue Trio, not send in that Aerodactyl, and let you get a big hit off. The Pinch Bear is also nice with Edge. This team does struggle somewhat against Status, Toxic, T Wave, Body Slam, whatnot. It has no sleep immunity. Jinx can be a struggle to switch into, but overall, I think it's fairly solid, and I like it a lot. On to the replay. Turn 1, it's lead Zapdos against lead Salamence. This matchup is not perfect, as they can rock slide me, and they do. However, it's very likely that they switch out, even if they are choice bed rock slide. And I want to baton pass into Smeargle to establish a layer of spikes. And I'd rather Zapdos take a rock slide than lose my Smeargle to a rock slide. And I really want to pivot. So they rock slide as I baton pass. I am intimidated, which is annoying. 
So I don't want to go into Metagross. And I don't want to go into Aerodactyl, Tyranitar. With my last being Spiragle, which also would not make sense. So I have to go into Suicune, which is the best pressure grip. With no penalty from the attack drop. And it also does not land in Scarborough. They go to Scarberry on my combine, and they look to establish a spike. Or it doesn't let it in Scarberry for free. So they establish a spike. But they take a lot of damage in return, which can be big big for my uh, physical attackers in the back. And here I can target Blissey with a Toxic. I miss, which is unfortunate. I take unnecessary damage, but it's not too big of a deal, and here I just toxic again with the same idea, trying to wear down the Blissey, force it out, and then get a kill as they have to switch. Here I surf, I believe, or no, I call mine, as it would punish Bents and punish Bliss. In one move, it's... and it will punish whatever they have in the back, too. So they T-wave me, and here I get to Ice Beam. This Ice Beam was looking for the Salamence, thinking they would want to try to catch me on a Surf instead of lose a Pokemon to a Surf later on. Here I try to catch the Salamence, no luck, as it reveals Aromatherapy. From this point it's uh, fairly obviously Suit Tyranitar and Magneton. Magneton was already pretty, uh, pretty damn likely. Uh, and Sutar also was pretty likely, even if it wasn't a Mono Bliss, but with it having nothing to hit Gengar, it's almost certainly per Sutar. With the last being a Rock Resist, most likely Swampert, although potentially Metagross. Here I, ble here I stay in, and I click Toxic. The idea behind this move, I believe, was I thought they would click Thunder Wave here, Otherwise, it's irrational to stay, and I'd rather just go Smeagol. Here I surf and get full parrot, which is annoying. I should have just went to straight out to Smeagol there. Though, with softballed and Toxic, and then they can T-Wave me and all that, it, it does cause problems. So perhaps that was the move. So here I go to Smeagol. The S tosses, here I Spore. And here I can get up spikes. Could have also drag dance there, but uh, perhaps it's best not to reveal that. And they very well may stay in, just to try and recover lefties as I spore. But they instead go to Scarborough, which also makes sense. Uh, there's some point I wanted to make. Uh, if I drag dance and then I spore here, then I go for spikes, potentially force the Scarborough to want to stay in, and whatever they switch into will not like this. Granted, I would want to establish a layer of spikes rather than directly baton pass, or I won't be able to do so in the future, but if I do do that, a potential roar per Sutar would be a big pain. And given the fact that they have the Magneton, there is a pretty good chance that it is roar. Here I just get a spike, I have no better opportunity with a sl sleep off on Scarberry, I can't sleep again, so I just have to establish it now, no drag nets, no, none of that. And then I go into Aerodactyl, as it's the only thing that com can comfortably eat an Earthquake and hit Power Fly. I get Critical Hit, and here I click Earthquake. The idea of this was it would hit Metagross if they wanted to go into that, but I think if they did have Metagross... They wouldn't go directly into it. I think they would try to go Skarmory and then Metagross, perhaps, or they might try to stay in. And maybe they do met go Metagross, but honestly, that's completely fine with me. It means they have a Metagross, which is far worse against the rest of my Pokemon. Because of that, I perhaps should have HP Flyed, which would hit Salamence, and it would also hit Swampert harder. And every percentage on Swampert can matter. And it's much more likely that they have Swampert than Salamence. Then Metagross, rather. So, I click Earthquake, and here I HP Fly. I want to get as much damage off as possible. It's peculiar that they don't have Protect, and if you look at the Blissey, 
then it's fairly obvious that they have rust and they're going to be a curse set. I don't think I realized that in the game, but I should have. Not sure. Here I go directly to Zapdos and I click Hidden Power Grass. Now they switch out to Mets. Hidden Power Grass is a very momentum draining move, however, there's no other Pokemon I could have went into other than Zapdos to really pressure the, the Swampert. And furthermore, given how bad clicking Hidden Power Grass would be into Swampert, it would make sense that he would try to predict me predicting him. Because the game is not 100% one for him, and if he can catch me on that turn predicting the switch, then he is very, very far ahead. And he would win the game. So, there's absolutely benefits to staying in there. Uh, it would not be a completely batshit risk. So, HP Grass is completely fine. At the end of the day, it's a prediction game. You just gotta maximize your odds. Here we go to Metagross as they rock slide. That would be fairly, fairly unlikely that they click Earthquake. They probably are expecting something like a, something like a Gengar, though perhaps last Tyranitar. Granted, that would not have a rock resist, so I'm not sure exactly, but yeah. They could be expecting a Swampert. They could be expecting a whole host of things, but. To point to one of the strengths of the teams, they don't know with any certainty. And that's really a benefit for me. And so here they go into Magneton as it's their only real switch. If you look at Swampert, it's extremely low. They don't want to go into that. They don't want to... They can't go Scar. They don't want to stay in. They don't want to go Blissey. And they don't want to go Tyranitar. They can go Scarberry or they can go Magneton. Magneton risks an Earthquake while Scarberry... Uh, I can bash it, and getting it lower would put them even further behind, or perhaps they're not behind right now, but weakening it would really help Tyranitar and whatnot, and if their Pokemon asleep wakes up, then I have free reign to spore something and whatnot. Here I'm clicking Mash, which would hit the Skarmory. Unfortunately, it doesn't hit Magneton. Perhaps, uh, in hindsight, I should have earthquaked, but again, it's a prediction game. He should know that I know that he has Magneton. And overall, you gotta click a button. Earthquake, mash, both fine. Lay T Bolt. Is that Earthquake? And here they send out Salamence. Fairly obvious they won't rock slide or HP flying doesn't KO either, so I go directly to Zapdos. Pretty clear earthquake, I think. Although he clicks Brick Break, which would also KO me and hit Zapdos, so good move. Here at T Wave, which is perhaps a bit passive. I suppose if he stayed in, there wasn't really much else I could do, so that's the best way to punish him. I think he went Blissey because it would also cover a Gengar switch, which could get annoying for him depending on my set. And perhaps T-Bolt, I mean it would be annoying. So yeah, makes sense to me. It's also worth mentioning, if he keeps Salamence healthy, then he'll stay out of Metagross range, which could be a big deal. Although it's unlikely that it is. Still a possibility. So here I BP into Smeargle, and here I I don't quite agree with my series of plays. Here I think I should have clicked Dragon Dance, because I'm not really in that bad of a position to sweep. If I DD as he goes Scarb, it's completely fine. Because then I can Spore, I can pass, and uh, if he sleeps for long enough, I will just win the game on the spot. Or at least I'll get to damage the Tyranitar. Or whatever comes in after the Mets. Instead, I click Spore, I believe, which is stupid. I was looking to punish Blissey staying in, or perhaps a Salamence, but... Even Salamence doesn't make too much sense to do this. In hindsight, this was a bad move, and Dragon Dance would have given me a really nice position. 
But alas, I have to live with my mistake, and here I switch to Suicune. Uh, I think the idea is that I live a hit from Salomon, so I double in predicting meds, and here I'm going to double out predicting the Blissey to come in. Here I Ice Beam. I mean, like, odds are he doesn't stand. I don't think Ice Beam is objectively incorrect, but... Yeah, he could have predicted a Tyranitar double there, which would have been really bad for him given the percentage that the Swampert is at. Uh, especially if I'm Lumber, which would be most likely. So, interesting move for me. Uh, it's not objectively wrong. Although, I think 7 times out of 10, I would have went Tar. Although, without Lumber, it does have its issues. So, I mean, I guess the question is, if I have Lumber, what will he then do with his Blissey? And the answer to that very well may be click T-Wave. And if he does do that, I am fairly screwed, given how Solomon's really destroys me, Blissey can take hits, etc. So... With that in mind, perhaps I did make the right move going for a choke there. Uh, let's rewind a bit, because I wasn't talking directly about that turn. And truthfully, I don't know what happened. So here I go Smeargle, with the idea being I can Dragon Dance in the top pass, most likely. Although he S tosses, which is that. Uh, I suppose I was trying to catch an aromatherapy, which would make sense uh, if you're giving up. And at this point, I mean, there isn't too much I can do other than try to wound with Tar. So here he very well must switch, fearing an explosion. However, he just stays in, which I think is a bit questionable, given the fact that. If I boom, I send out Tar, I click Rock Slide, he dies. And then, I'm pretty sure Swampert would be in range. He'd have to go mad so I could sack something, send out Zapdos, T-Wave, and look to Dragon Dance up and uh, whatnot. So, I think he should have switched there. And I think I should Dragon Dance instead of Spore and sack it, which I think is a... Bad move for me. It didn't make much sense. I was trying to weaken the Swampert, I suppose, but... Uh, yeah. It's really passive. But even now I can win with Metagross in. Or no, I'm actually so low. Yeah, he can just go Scarber. I need insane luck, so here I should mash. But I'm actually slower, as I believe is revealed by lefties, which would explain why he stayed in. Uh, I assume at some point in the game, he would know that I'm slower. And given the damage I take, the damage I dealt. Although there is no direct Pokemon that would tell him that. Unless his Magneton was really slow for some reason. And it's just most likely slower on Agility Gross than a Max Speed Blissey. So, I didn't even take this into account, but from there it's even worse. And from here, the game is mostly just lost. I sent out Tar. I believe I... I should probably Rock Slide here. I made Dragon Dance. And from this point, the game is really just over. As he can do what he wants. I switch out Zapdos. Or he whirls. Yeah, he clicked Roar. And forced in Zapdos, but even from here, there's nothing I can do to win the game. So there's not much use in talking about it. I battled this, but at the end of the day, the Salamence can just come in and click Brick Break. Or Earthquake. Either one works. Uh, I believe Earthquake I had a small chance of living. He could have just Brick Break. But, like, it really doesn't matter too much. I would have just brick break, sacked Swampert, and then sent to Benson and HP Flyed, given the Suicune has revealed all of its moves. That is risk-free. Granted, I don't think Earthquake really holds much of a risk either. 
तो वे भी Here's Suikudai's descent. Last, very certain it's Tyranitar.